Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. Today I have Alexa with me. I'm emphasizing her name because I just screwed up on her name <laughs> before we got on this call. So without further ado, I'm going to let Miss Alexa take it away. And Miss Alexa is a podcast host on movies, believe it or not. So I'm going to let Alexa take it away. Hi, Wynn. I just I want to say thank you so much for having me on Butterflies of Wisdom. Um, so, yes, I am a podcaster. I'm also a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a student. Um, but a little bit about my podcast. It is on movies. It's actually a podcast called You Can Rewind It. So my husband and I are the co-hosts, and what we do is we rewatch movies from our childhood, and we see if we still like them and <laughs> – if they still hold up today, if we still think they're good movies using today's standards. So that's kind of what we do. We have a lot of fun, and um, I'm just really excited to have this opportunity to talk to you about it. Well, I am happy to interview you, and I want to say having a co-host that you live with 24-7, more power to you, because (laughs) I couldn't do that. I could not do that. I could <laughs> not um, live with my co-host 24-7. Even if I had a co-host, I could not do that. So when you say you're a student, what are you studying? So I have a um, bachelor's degree in communications, and I've actually done a lot of different jobs throughout the years, but all of a sudden, I just thought, I want to go back and learn more. Like, I, wa- I wanted to specifically study radio. So that's kind of how I got into podcasting, too, is when I went back and I was taking a radio class, one of our assignments was to listen to a podcast and then come back and report on it to the class. And so I did that, and then I was like, hmm, this is something that I'm interested in, and that's how the podcast was, was really thought of, is taking that radio class. The bug bit you after taking the radio class. Okay. I Yes, see. definitely. I see. Well, the bug has bit me. I'm actually going back to school in the fall to study fashion journalism, believe it or not. So the bug That's has great. bit me because, of course, I've been self-taught for four years, so it's time for me to get the the training. And what is your favorite movie that you have done? So I have, my eyes have totally been opened by this experience because believe it or not, something that you watch as a child, sometimes you will get a totally different perspective later in life. So just recently we did Father of the Bride. Now, when I watched it before, I don't, I wasn't even married for one thing, but I was looking at it through more through a child's eyes, and then now I'm off, I'm a mom of daughters, so of course I'm seeing everything from the main char- from Steve Martin, the main character, from his side, and and you know this time when I watched it, I cried, and actually uh, my husband Brock, he cried too. So it's just it's just totally different. You look at things different, and um, it's fun to see um, if I if I see people and I say. Have you seen Father of the Bride? And they say yes. They said, well, have you seen it since you've had kids? Because it's just going to totally blow you away. Yeah. So that has been um, one of your favorite movies that you have featured on your podcast. And what has been your biggest entrepreneurial moment? Well, I'm going to say, what has been your favorite podcasting moment and then your biggest entrepreneurial moment? If you are an entrepreneur, are you just doing this podcast on the side for fun? Well, right now, it's basically just for fun. I mean, we try not to get too caught up in, you know, what are our numbers and everything. And it's always fun to see, you know, that people are listening or that, um, you know, you get positive feedback or um, compliments on it so that's always great but right now it's for fun and um, we try not to let anything you know bring us down it's like well we're doing this for fun and honestly it's just a fun way for us to spend time together too uh, my husband and I watch the movies together make notes and then we record the podcast so 
right now we we actually don't make money on it, but we're having fun. And you know, and for radio, I'm getting experience just speaking and you know learning how to to do that, just being being on air and and that kind of thing too. So it works. <laughs> so you do have a full time job, and if you don't mind me asking, what is your full time? job so right now my full-time job is being a mom to two girls ah <laughs> uh, yeah that's a full-time job in itself um yes it is people, it don't, is. people don't understand that they think um being a mom is a part-time job but nope nope being a mom no. is a full-time <laughs> job yeah it's it's great. That's kind of the cool thing about podcasting is, is you can do it on your own time. And yeah. you you don't really need a whole lot to start one up, really. And I think that's why a lot of people are getting into it, is that if you have an idea, you can put it out there. And there really isn't anyone saying, no, you can't put this out there. No, that's a bad idea. Like It's up to you to put it out there. Now, if people respond to it or not, that's one thing. But you have access to put your thoughts and ideas out there, and that's the coolest thing about podcasting. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, and I, I definitely agree with you. Now, did you before you started this podcast? Did you have any idea what it would turn into? I would say no, just because even though I use I do use social media. Nothing like you do when you are trying to start up a podcast, you know, just getting on Twitter and constantly, you know, joining groups and interacting with people. And it's actually been really fun, but it's a lot of work. Social media is a lot of work, actually, and I didn't know that going into it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it's a lot of work. Oh, yes. It is a lot of work. So what would be your best tips for the newbie podcast out there that wants to start a podcast? So I think you need to start with a good, you know, a good idea, obviously. And what we're trying to do right now, and, and everybody can have, you know, has their own opinion on this, but we try to keep our podcast fairly short, like they say commuting time, so for people who commute. You know, what they say, like 30 yep. minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Yep. Um, so no longer than that. Because if it's too long, then it's, you know, you have to stop it and you're going to have to come back to it. So um, we try to keep it down in that area. And since we have kids, we do try to keep it, you know, on the clean side so that, you know, if someone wants to play it in the car and their kids are in there. And we tell people, you know, your kids are probably not going to be interested in it. They may not like it. But if it's on and they hear it, it's not a big deal. So those those are two things. Well, that's and a good I would policy say, right there. Yeah, and then also is, like, you will have to get on social media and connect with people. And you would be surprised at how many um, supportive people or podcasters are out there that want to help you. You know, you help them, they help you. And it's actually a, a really a good community of positivity for the most yeah. part. Yeah. The pod and family hashtag that I use is unbelievable how much response I've got from my story and how much the podcasting community loves welcoming us as a podcaster. Mm, yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And so, okay, now, Alexa, where can people find you and where can people get a hold of you? So I have an email, and the podcast is called You Can Rewind It, and almost everything is under that. So, like, the Twitter page is You Can Rewind It. Same with the Facebook, You Can Rewind It. And then also the email, You Can Rewind It at gmail.com. So you can send us an email if you have a movie that, you know, you would like us to see. We try to keep our movies 80s and, like, very early 90s. Because that's about the time that we were, you know, growing up, and those are the movies that we that we know and, and love. Yeah, you know, only nineties. Well, would right. they have 
you ever looked at a Disney Channel movie? I'm just asking the older Disney Channel movies, not the new stuff. I'm trying to think if we've done a Disney movie yet. Not yet, but we're open to whatever. Not yet. Maybe you should do an uh, old uh, Disney Channel movie. Sure. Yeah, we're we're just uh, we're just having fun with this. We're getting ready to do. I don't know if you remember or heard of the movie Fletch with Chevy Chase. My husband's been dying to do that movie, and so that's the next movie on our list. Oh boy! Well, I'm yeah. going to have to <laughs> now listen to your podcast and now obviously watch the movies because I am uh, okay. Movies off on not that great. Alexa, I um, am more of a connoisseur of podcasts than I am movies, mainly because I don't have time to sit and watch a movie. I mean, my right. brain would um, be put to sleep, honestly, if I sat and watched a movie for too long. But um, I'm going to have to start because that's great self-care, you guys, if you just sit and watch a movie. And so I'm going to have to start. So, Alexa, you might have got <laughs> me on the track of watching movies more and more and then also listening to your podcast. Now, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do, actually. I In my um, my bio, I mentioned, you know, when I had I had a birthday and I don't really like to to bring it up because it was you know it was a big it was a big birthday a scary one the big four yes. oh, I don't know <laughs> we haven't had that one yes but, and it hit that birthday just hit me really hard like just made me think you know you know what am I doing why you know it's just weird it was a weird birthday and it just inspired me to you know go back to school and start this podcast so I was wondering for you. Was there something that sparked you to want to write a book, or was that something that you had always wanted to do? Well, I had a uh, tragic loss. I actually had two stop and smell the those moments, at one at age 19 and then the other one at age 23. And that's when I started my journalism career at age 23, self-taught. And I'm actually coming up on a big milestone birthday. My fans know what that is. And it scares me that now I'm older with CP and I am going back to school for my 30th birthday present to myself because I want the training in journalism now Mm -hmm. to become a better podcast and to become a better writer. That's great. I had I have one other question for you that's in yep. the movie realm. Go ahead. Is there is there a movie that was from your childhood that you loved as a child and later you watched it and you just got a totally different perspective on it? I I thought about this one as I was typing you the email this morning and I would have to say Pocahontas, which I haven't sat down and watched the Disney Channel movie in a while. I have still fight it. And or Pirates of the um, – or a Muppets movie, which I still have, but um, that's not really a movie per se. But I would have to say Pocahontas. Okay. Or The Lion King, which, um, because I'm of the 90s, and I'm of the late 80s and early 90s genera- and 90s generation as well. Mm-hmm. So. Did you did you think they were as good as you had remembered when you watched them again? Well, I haven't, I haven't sat down and watched The Lion King um, in a while now, but I would think that the Lion King, the Disney Channel movie, would actually be scary. And I tell you what movie is scary for kids that is recently done is The Jungle Book. My God. 
and <laughs> that recently we done and my god i um <laughs> saw the disney channel version and then i saw the um non disney channel version in the um there it is, and my God, that's not too hot a <laughs> sense, but I haven't watched The Lion King, the Disney Channel version, in uh, quite a while. Well, you'll have to watch it and let me know what you think. <laughs> I will. I will have to watch it and let you know what I think. So, I want to ask you are you going to um, see what your goals think? What's your goals favorite movie? Hmm. You know, they kind of go from movie to movie. So they, they right now they have been into that movie Trolls. They really like that movie. I think because of all the uh-huh. music and everything. Um, so they, they enjoyed uh-huh. that movie. I try to get them to watch some of these movies with us, the movies that we're watching. Sometimes they can get into it, sometimes they can't. I have to tell them to get off their electronics. They try to play with their electronics yeah. during the movie, Too much. and I have to tell them to get off. Like, you can't be on that, you know, electronics. You're supposed to be watching this movie. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, they kind of watch. We just watched Three Men and a Baby, and they were kind of interested in that. And they've, they watched some of the other ones with us, so... I'm trying to get them involved in these movies. And that's actually uh, one of the things when I talk to other um, people from my generation about the movies, and they say, you know what, I tried to show, you know, let's say, never-ending story to my kids, something I loved. And then when I rewatched it, my kids were bored, and I was thinking, why did I like this movie? <laughs> so that's, you know, that's kind of the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you, you just, you just yeah. like, oh, I thought this was good. And the kids were like, uh-uh. Nope, nope, nope. They like more animation stuff. They like more music now than we did. We um, sat down to watch movies. There weren't so many songs, and there weren't so many movie parts, and there weren't so many animatronics in um, movies of all generations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if you watch some of those movies from the ones that I watched, the the effects are going to be pretty bad. I mean, you didn't notice them then, but you'll go back and, and look at them now and think, okay, <laughs> not as good. But, yeah. you know, you can you can look past that, especially if you had a love for the movie to begin with. There's a nostalgia thing there, and there's something there that will make you, make you still like it, maybe. Um, or, you know, like the movie, I'd say the movie we did, Mannequin, not that, you know, you may not, you might still like it, but I remember loving Mannequin, and then I see it now, and I'm just like, it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. We try not yeah. to tear in the movies too bad, because that could be someone's favorite, and we get it. But it's like, man, that was, a lot of that doesn't even make sense, but I, I used to love it. Yeah, a lot, a lot of movies nowadays don't make sense, because there's so many digital effects. I mean, I have, um, I know people in the movie industry, and there's so much digital effects that go on. I mean, I have a um, friend that all he does, he went to school for the, he does moving graphic design, and for movies, and for YouTube, and there's so many digital effects as to what goes next. Mhm. It's crazy to keep I would say and adults entertained. I would say one other thing that really stands out from the 80s movies to now is two different movies lately we've watched that involve um dads like Mr. Mom and then we just watched Three Men and ba- Three Men and a Baby and it's kind of like the men are kind of fumbling around they don't really know, you know, what to do at home. And I think that's becoming less relevant in today's society because we have so many dads that are um, so hands-on. So that type of dad is not really around as much, the dad that doesn't know what to do. These, this generation of, of men are, are way more involved. So it's not as yeah. relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, there was a movie 
with Steve Morton and he, um, in the movie, he has eight kids and speaking of books and movies, the, I can't remember the name of it right now, I have to look it up, but in that movie, he stumbles around to figure out um, what to do. And now, mm-hmm. with now these modern movies, it's like men are more involved in their child's lives. So I get, mm-hmm. yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. Mhm. Yeah. I just wonder: Are these movies? How long can they appeal to people if that part isn't relevant anymore? I don't know. It's just an interesting, <laughs> just an interesting thought. <laughs> yep. And, again, you guys, go check out the Lexus podcast. It's um, a wonderful podcast. I haven't listened to it, but, yes, you got a new fan. And I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode. This podcast is actually sponsored by Kidder, K-I-T-T-E-R. And what Kidder does is you can post the tweet, and they put the trending hashtag with it and or they can compose the tweet for you and put the trending hashtag with it and I'm sorry but it's not mobile yet I'm sorry but it's not mobile yet and I would love to thank Alexa for coming on and before I let Alexa go any piece of closing advice Alexa for the movie fans out there well, I have two things of advice. One would be um, check out those old movies, those movies that you love. Give them, give them a rewatch. Give them some love again. You know, take them off the shelf, read them from the library, whatever you have to do. And second is if podcasting is something that you're interested in, give it a try. If you have an idea, don't be afraid to just put yourself out there. Well, that's wonderful pieces of advice. And please, please, please share your, share your old movies with friends and share this modern digital media of podcasting. I'm sure Alexa and I, I know I would love that, and Alexa would love more fans of old movies. And again, I thank Alexa for coming on and sharing her wisdom and why she does her podcast. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.